All right, Thursday, February 17th, around 2 p.m. Thanks for joining me. We have a ton to talk about, so get ready. This is going to be uh, quite the update here. Of course, we're looking at two events right now, and potentially three, by the way, but two events, one for tomorrow, mostly during the afternoon, but we, I can't rule out at least a spit of uh, snow in the morning, so keep that in mind. And then, of course, the big storm that you've probably all heard about now, uh, for early next week, and then maybe even another storm for later next week. But we're going to concentrate on tomorrow and then the Monday and Tuesday system in this update. Right now, uh, this is the infrared satellite imagery. Just wanted to quickly show you. Here's our uh, system for tomorrow now over Montana. It is going to move to the east and southeast. It's going to bring up some warm air or bring over some warm air from the Rockies into Minnesota briefly in western Wisconsin, and then we'll be followed by another shot of Arctic air with strong winds. All right, uh, here are temperatures. Now, here's the problem for tomorrow. We're picking this up tomorrow morning. These are temperatures across Minnesota and, and western Wisconsin. We're going to be in the single digits to near 10 degrees tomorrow morning around sunrise, but watch what happens, and look what's happening out west of us. That's a, a rapid and strong surge of warm air that's going to boost our temperatures into the mid to upper 30s, the way it appears, by tomorrow afternoon. And as that warm air moves in tomorrow morning, again, it may touch off just a brief spit of precipitation. I'll show you that here in just a second. And then look at what happens. Look what's happening in northwestern Minnesota already tomorrow afternoon. These are Arctic winds and Arctic air that will be a surging southeast into Minnesota so that by and here's one of our problems so that by evening tomorrow we will dip into the single digits so our temperature is going to drop about 20 to 30 degrees in, in probably a two to three hour period during the late afternoon and evening hours tomorrow so that'll be a flash freeze which means that any precipitation that falls is going to quickly freeze uh, once that Arctic uh, front moves through and then that Arctic air sticks with us into Saturday. Here's your precipitation. We pick it up at uh, right around sunrise tomorrow, about 6 a.m. You can see snowing in northern Minnesota. And then here's that real brief shot maybe of uh, some snow or flurries right around 7 or 8 a.m. tomorrow. I'm not too confident in that. What I am confident with is this uh, line, maybe a scattered line, but it'll be about a one to two hour period of snow showers, maybe even some sleet showers mixed in with it as we get into the two, three, four, and five o'clock time frame across the region. So somewhere between 1 p.m. and 6 p.m. tomorrow is when we're going to get that brief period of precipitation, most, most of it, if not all of it, in the frozen variety. And then, yes, that Arctic front follows. All right. Looking ahead to Monday and Tuesday of next week, I've sent this um, graphic to you. This is the travel impact map. Now, of course, we'll be following it up here with some snow totals or potential snow totals map maps. Either tomorrow or Saturday is when I'm going to come out with it. But regardless, this is a high impact area already. I'm pretty confident right now that much of our region, especially uh, from the Twin Cities, on east into Wisconsin, so right across, right across the Twin Cities metro, uh, the axis right now of most significant winter weather would be almost right across the Twin Cities, and it looks like uh, we've got some a lot of great things going for us for a winter storm here. First of all, there will be a jet streak north of us, and we will be in the right rear quad of that jet streak, and then there will be another powerful jet streak um, moving from southwest to northeast from uh, northern Missouri into southern Wisconsin, and we'll be on the left front quad of that jet streak. So we're in between these two jet streaks, which is a perfect area for a significant lift, hence the reason why I'm expecting a winter storm to develop over the region. Now, when we look at the heights, the thicknesses in our atmosphere, and we put this into motion now, here comes the uh, Clipper system, by the way, this is tomorrow's clipper system. It's a pretty strong one, hence the reason why we're going to have uh, lots of wind with this system. And then we focus our attention to what's happening out west here. This is important because watch how this, these lower heights and thicknesses start to dig out in the western U.S. That puts us in a prime area. We're in between a ridge 
here on the eastern half of the country and a trough here in the western half of the country. We are in between, and that is a perfect area for a storm system, for a winter storm, especially this time of the year. Hence the reason why this is the area to really watch out for as we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week. And the problem is, is that even as we go into later next week, this this trough, this these lower thicknesses stay west of us. So until this lower trough or these lower thicknesses and lower heights, until they clear our area and move east of us, we're going to be in a position where we could still get precipitation even later next week. So just keep that in mind. All right. Now, when we look at the jet stream, of course, the river bear at 30 to 35,000 feet. And let's uh, fast forward this. By the way, here's tomorrow's clipper. We are on the uh, left front quad of this jet streak here that is coming out of Canada. Not a lot of moisture to work with, but certainly a lot of wind for tomorrow. Now, when we fast forward this to Monday and Tuesday, here's that, that jet, those two jet streaks I was talking about. This is Tuesday morning. Here's the one jet streak just north of Minnesota, and then the other jet streak south and east of Minnesota. We are in between... And again, that's a perfect spot for a winter storm, hence the reason why I'm concerned. And all model guidances, there's a consensus with all medium range model guidances that this is gonna be the setup for early next week. Now watch what happens with moisture as we go into early next week and keep an, keep an eye on the Gulf of Mexico right here. It's dry this weekend in the Gulf of Mexico, but watch what happens as we get into early next week. Look at how the moisture surges north. This is an advection pattern where moisture straight from the Gulf of Mexico is advected north into Minnesota and Wisconsin. Of course, that moisture is lifted up and over that cold frontal boundary, that Arctic air mass, and that's another perfect uh, setup or ingredient needed for a winter storm. And when we look, when we get closer, we're zoomed in now to the northern plains and upper Midwest, and we got the low level temperatures here. These are the temperatures at about 5,000 feet and this is also important. You can see that the Twin Cities and all of our region, Rochester, Mankato, Eau Claire, St. Cloud, we are all well below freezing in the lower levels of our atmosphere. And in fact, our temperatures are in that minus 9 to minus 14 degrees Celsius range as we get into Tuesday morning. That is a perfect temperature for dendrite growth. We call that the dendrite growth zone. And that's where you get those big fat flakes, the ones that can accumulate rapidly as we get into Tuesday morning. And when we go up a little bit in the atmosphere, up to 10 to 15,000 feet, you can also see that most of the area, especially from the Twin Cities here on northwest to near St. Cloud and Brainerd, this area is also continues to be in that perfect dendrite growth zone the minus 9 to minus 14 Celsius temperature range on Tuesday morning. So just looking at that setup right now would tell me that this area right here is going to be the bullseye for heavy snows, at least as of this point, as we get into Monday and Tuesday of next week. All right, here we go. Here's your trigger graph. And of course, I've also sent this to you. And here's that uh, little bit of precipitation, not only perhaps tomorrow morning, but into tomorrow afternoon. I think the most prevalent time will be between 1 p.m. and 5 p.m. tomorrow. And then that Arctic front moves through, and, and there's our temperature. Look how it crashes on Saturday morning. And then we warm right back up uh, to above freezing levels, uh, thaws likely on Sunday before temperatures again crash. In fact, Arctic air is in place after Sunday. Almost all of next week, our temperatures are going to be well below normal, and that will be because we're going to have quite the snowpack in place the way it appears. If this does come to fruition where we get the significant snows Monday and Tuesday, uh, we are going to have a snowpack that will only uh, reinforce the Arctic air mass that will be in place, and our temperatures will be well below normal, no doubt much, if not all, of next week. And my, I think from a timing standpoint, as of right now, I'm most concerned about the, oh, noon Monday to 6 p.m. Tuesday time range. 
that's what I'm looking at right now but we'll fine-tune that of course as we go through time now one thing I did want to just quickly mention to you is as we get into Sunday night and into Monday morning I am expecting a real narrow band of precipitation let's see if we can pull that up here I'm just gonna put the uh, European computer model guidance for precipitation I'm gonna rewind this now back to Monday morning and this is gonna be a key that's Monday morning now here's Sunday evening and here's midnight Sunday this is gonna be the key this is some areas in our region may start off earlier than anticipated with some snow and where this finger of snow this will be about a 50 mile wide band of snow where this sets up is really going to tip the hand of this storm system because that'll likely be the area that as we get into Monday and Tuesday that's going to be near or in the axis of heaviest snow so you can see on Sunday at midnight we're already getting just that narrow finger of snow through the Twin Cities Metro and if that does come to fruition this storm may kick off even earlier than many uh, media outlets are, are telling you so uh, again we're gonna keep a close eye on radar as we get into a Sunday night to see where that first initial band of precipitation sets up and hey just a quick little note look at the severe weather going on down in Mississippi uh, just a sign that we are approaching spring now as severe weather is also becoming a problem across portions of the country all right uh, we will have a lot more for you of course over the next 72 hours as this big storm approaches um, for Monday and Tuesday. I will have another update for you probably around 9 a.m. tomorrow morning and we'll touch on the on tomorrow's system during that update also. All right, hey, thanks for joining me. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this. Uh, have a uh, great Thursday evening.